All right, Mark chapter 10, verse 1, NLT version. Then Jesus left Capernaum and went down to the region of Judea and in the, in the area east of the Jordan River. Again, crowds gathered around him, and as usual, he was teaching them. It says that the crowds gathered around him. It said once again, the crowds gathered around him. So I know we hear the term a lot that Jesus hung around sinners. But when I read this, I think it's the opposite. I think sinners hung around Jesus. Mm. But there's a big difference between Jesus hanging out with sinners and sinners hanging out with Jesus. Yeah. You know, Jesus didn't go to the bars and just hang out and shoot the breeze. These right. guys, that's where Jesus was at. And they were sinners, and some were being converted, others were not. But there's a big difference there. And then, what did Jesus do when, when, when this big crowd was around him? It says, as usual, he was teaching them. <clears throat> he didn't entertain them. He didn't get, hey, Peter, John, Bartholomew, get the instrument, sing some songs for these guys. You know, hey guys, go collect an offering. Look at all these people here. You know, he didn't make them laugh. None of that stuff. It was, he began to teach them. So I just thought of, I just thought of like, what's my legacy going to be like? You know, what are people going to say about myself? You know, when I hang around people, are they going to say, well, you know, Ponce always taught us the Bible. Or every time Ponce hung around me, he always talked about the word, you know, and what does Jesus teach? In this particular section, he teaches them about marriage. But what I had noticed is that the crowd came to Jesus, wasn't the other way around, and whenever the crowd was around Jesus, he taught them. So do you guys remember that cute phrase that we used to go around, WWJD? What would Jesus do? Yeah. Jesus would teach people. And I, I just, when I read it today, I thought, you know, that, that's what I want people to say about me one day. You know, to God's glory, that, you know, whenever I hung around Ponzi, he taught the Bible. Whenever I hung around him, you know, he shared the Bible with us. He gave us Bible quizzes. He, whatever, it's something to do with God, giving God glory. And not so much where, oh, he was just a lot of fun. He's always a jokester. None of that stuff. See, I, I want, our goal is to try to be like Jesus, just like we sent they read, to have the same mindset of Christ. And this is how we find out what he thought. You know, this is how we find out by reading his word. We find out what he did. And now we have to try to imitate what he did. That really hit home with me when you said, uh, it's not Jesus going to the sinners, but the sinners that were gravitating towards Jesus. And I thought, if we were to live more like Jesus and exemplify his ways, um, we're more obedient to everything he commands of us, I think we would draw larger crowds. If we were like Jesus, we would have more opportunities to share. And, you know, because we were closer to Jesus in our actions, we would be more successful in showing people the way. I think that's, that's it right there. I mean. True. Something to examine ourselves about, right? Like are, are crowds coming to you? Yeah. Are you, uh, are you able to tell others about Jesus because people are coming to you and asking you about him? I know a lot of us, it happens to a lot of us where we're at work or we're at school or wherever we're at and someone asks for prayer. You know, that says a lot. You know, they might not go to church or they might have problems, but they know to come to you for prayer. And I think that's pretty cool when people say those kind of things like, oh, somebody asked me for prayer and they don't know the Lord. And, and that's the way it should be. Like, like you're saying, people should come to us for, for Jesus. We're probably the only Jesus they ever get to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Yeah. It is. And the same way, I mean, the person doesn't have to come to you. I mean, find, find ways. Uh, I try to find ways. It's like when I see someone preoccupied, I, I go to that person and I said, is there anything I can pray for? Is there anything? And the person, people really appreciate, uh, uh, and 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 they see when when they see fruit of it, 
how the Lord can be uh, powerful and mighty and all over their problems, over their preoccupation, over anything, that then then uh, they they get more uh, uh, they they tend to ask more questions, and that's another great opportunity to to share the Lord with them.